Hi guys, welcome to part two of the Raspberry Pi Amiga emulator setup. So in this episode we're just going to talk about, in fact if you haven't seen the first episode, I'll put an annotation somewhere. So in this one, we're going to talk about what hardware you're actually going to need to do this. So first up, you're going to need the Pi, the Rasp this the Raspberry Pi 2, and that's cheap old plastic case that I bought from eBay for like three quid delivered. So that's the most important thing. Next thing, going to need to power the damn thing. So there are Raspberry Pi power supplies for sale on eBay, Amazon, etc. You don't really need them. Any USB power supply will do. Well, almost any. It needs to put out, it needs to be a 2 amp one. So this is a one for my son's huddle tablet. And this is just, I think this is just one of my many USB cables I have lying around the house. So check, just check the bottom if it says 2A. If it says like 1.8, at 1.4 or 1.2 is probably not going to be enough. So I'd be very reluctant in buying a cheap one of these on eBay or Amazon. I really would. Um, it could be fake and it could kill you, frankly. Cheap chargers are a nightmare from China. And the CE mark, um, yeah, it might have the CE mark, but the, there's also the China export logo, which looks exactly the same, just the spacing between the C and the E are very slightly different. So, if you're buying one, I wouldn't buy one off eBay, buy one from Amazon, and make sure it's from Amazon, not from some third party reseller, or go to the shop and spend a few pounds on one. Or alternatively, look around the house, you probably got one. So, that how we're powering it. Next thing is input. So the Pi is USB. So we'll need a USB mousse. Now I found this one in a box. It's uh, my, a genius laser two button mouse with a scroll wheel. Uh, most importantly it has a USB connector. So y you'll have one. If not a few pound just don't buy them from the pound shop because I had one of them and they're terrible. Spend a few pounds on one. Again, eBay or Amazon doesn't really matter. Keyboard. I'm going to need a keyboard. Now, first of all, I was going to use this keyboard. I've had for ages. However, it's a PS2 connector. So you can get PS2 to USB connectors. Lord knows I've certainly got plenty of turn USB back into PS2. But when I went looking for my PS2 USB connector, I couldn't bloody find it. So I hummed and I hawed, as the Scots would say, as in we couldn't make up our mind. So I went out and I spent six whole British pounds on a Polaroid, Polaroid USB one from my local supermarket. I could have got one a couple of pounds cheaper online, but I wanted to do the video today. So it's a little keyboard. The reason, the reason I didn't use my Mac keyboard is A, it's wireless, and B, I need it. So, keyboard, again, you've probably got one, if not, buy one cheap off eBay or whatever. I'm very well aware there's some very smart little keyboard with trackpads built in for the Raspberry Pi, but I'm showing you to do the setup on the cheap, because I'm cheap, and I want it just basic setup. If you find it's not for you after you've done it, You've not wasted much money, but if you love it, then spend the money on the keyboard. Now, internet connectivity. The Pi does have an Ethernet port, and you can buy a wireless dongle for about three, four, five pounds. This setup won't be using that at the moment. The room I'm in at the moment doesn't have wired internet; has wireless. So I'm going to build a setup without it just to get it working, and then later on I'll decide what I'm going to do, whether I buy a, a little Ethernet dongle or not. Now, one of the other most important things I've ever said, this Pi, the, the number two, is a micro USB, micro SD, not standard SD. So, you're going to need a micro SD card. So, I have here a 16 gig one, a SanDisk one. I think this used to be in my Android phone once upon a time. So, I think... The cheap, the quick and easy setup I'm going to show you is, you, I think recommends an 8, so this is a 16, so that's plenty. 
Now you're going to have to get this inside your computer somehow to copy data, whether it be a PC, a Mac, whatever. So there are a couple of options. First of all, your machine may have a port for this, which if it does, perfect. Plug it in. If not, here's a micro SD to USB connector. Plug that in. Your computer will recognise it as an external drive. You can copy paste files. You can get one of these. It's a micro SD to SD card adapter. So you got an SD card. Your computer might take that. If not, one of these. So the cheap. Again, plugs into the USB port. This is about a pound in the pound shop or the dollar store or whatever country you may be in. I'm doing this setup on a Mac, so my Mac reads SD cards, has an SD card reader on the side there. So one of these that again I had lying around. This is from way back when. This is about some old Motorola phone I've for years. So we have power, keyboard, mouse, SD card. How to read your SD card. Now, so keyboard and mouse should be enough to play some Amiga games. However, you might want to have a wee controller. So I'm going to use my wired Xbox 360 controller because I, the software I'm going to use supports it. I also have a couple of generic, no, no brand ones, you know, that are USB as well. I'll use one of them. That worked fine. Finally, we need to connect it to your TV or monitor because I'm going to use that monitor behind me. So you need an HDMI cable. Again, cheap and cheerful. A pound, two pound, a couple of dollars, whatever. Do not spend £100 or £50 on oxygen-free HDMI connectors. They're a waste of money and a con. Don't bother. Cheap and cheerful. So, that's all the hardware we're needing. Next step is software. This is where it gets a little more complicated. But I'm going to show you the, a cheaty way of doing it. So, thanks for watching guys, and I will see you in part 3. Take care, and bye bye.